Amazing projects we just heard about, and they're just uh, some of uh, many, many projects that uh, we're seeing in the big data arena. Uh, and I'd really like you to consider a, a new term, uh, data chasm. If you really look at what we're doing here with big data, it's really a, a industry revolution around having really the infinite ability to store and process large amounts of big data. And uh, the terms are uh, you know, very similar or kind of a knockoff of uh, a couple of terms coined in books by George Gilder back in the 90s. He wrote a, a book called Microcosm, and it really talked about how having infinite compute really changed the world, including the PC revolution. And Telecosm, that talked about how fiber optic networks, 802.11, Bluetooth, satellite networks, really collect, connected people, connected computers, connected the world. I'm sure everybody in the audience here has an Apple or an Android phone that's connected due to the uh, really innovations around Telecosm. So Datacosm is really what we might be seeing with, with big data. And with its roots in really revolutionizing internet search. So MapReduce really came on the scene to be able to do massive processing to revolize uh, internet search and then social networking. And so it really came from the Web 2.0 companies, but now we're seeing customers that we work with processing a trillion dollars worth of financial transactions a day and doing analytics on that using big data technologies, as well as working with the Web 2.0s and where we're working to do analytics on almost 100% of the web traffic in the United States on a daily basis. So where's Datacosm taking us next? Really from its roots in batch predictive analytics, more to real-time interactive processing. So we're really very excited about a project that started earlier this year called Apache Drill. Provides a, a real-time SQL query engine for the same data that you're doing your batch analytics against within your Hadoop cluster. It's an open source project. There's over 200 people involved in that project. 107 en engineers participated in the last hackathon. And the Apache PMC says we'll have a working technology out in the market in just a few months. Additionally, Datacosm has to take us, I'm sorry, uh, there, there's additional SQL-based technologies out there as well. So we're excited about Apache Drill, but there have been some commercial products out there like our partners Drawn to Scale and Hadapt for quite a while now. Uh, of course, Hive's been a standard part of the distribution for a, a long time. And then there was also the Impala technology announced this week. So where else does Datacosm have to take us? It's really more into database-like processing or table-based processing. And HBase has been a, a very, very popular technology within the big data Hadoop stack. And we see HBase in almost half of the implementations that we work, work on with customers. And you can think of the use cases for HBase as kind of database-like uh, processing, table stores, uh, large, uh, you can run analytics against your tabular data. You can also use it as a, a large blob store. Um, some of the more interesting, more recent use cases we've been working on is uh, with one telco organization, they're building a telco billing app on HBase. So if you look at the massive amount of data to track by telcos today versus you know, 20 years ago when you only had maybe one or two telephone numbers and not a data plan, uh, it provides them a much more scalable and more cost-effective solution. And uh, we're also working with a uh, shipping company on a logistics application to use it for package tracking. So we're starting to see some of the early, more what you might call lightweight OLTP type applications also being built into the Hadoop cluster. So you can really look at HBase as a, maybe a more scalable alternative to, to Mongo. So if you're considering Mongo or you have a Mongo app, you might look at HBase to gain some more scalability. Or it's also a, a more reliable and a dependable alternative to technologies like React and, and Scality, where you're getting a strong consistency model uh, for, uh, for your data. And also, you're able to leverage that Hadoop cluster that you have already made an investment in. So you get a, a broader range of use cases that you can implement on top of your Hadoop cluster. Now, we've included HBase in our M3 free edition, M5 enterprise-grade uh, supported edition for quite some time. This week, we announced M7, 
And M7 provides some enterprise enhancements to HBase that we think will, will help customers that are using HBase or considering it for additional use cases. Uh, there's really three different areas we tried to address. One is to make it easier to deploy and run HBase applications in production. So there we've eliminated a couple of uh, issues that have been difficult to deal with. We've eliminated uh, region servers and the requirement to do manual splits. Um, with regard to dependability, we allow you to back up your data and do a point in time recovery, mirror it for disaster recovery to a, a secondary cluster, and also provide instant region recovery. And then also address performance as well. So we've uh, smoothed out the performance characteristics of HBase by eliminating uh, an attribute of, of HBase called compactions, so that cause a an I.O. spike occasionally during your operations, so we've smoothed that out and also uh, reduced the effect of Java gar garbage collection on HBase applications. So uh, I'd like to invite Jason France up on stage. Jason's the architect at MapR responsible for our M7 product, and he's going to do a brief uh, walkthrough of the, uh, the product, uh, just a quick demo. Okay. So uh, first I just want to uh, show... Oh, we're flipping over to a demo video, but um, the basic picture is I just want to show first how it interacts with the rest of MapR system, and then show how you can use this one feature, snapshots, in order to recover data. Oh, the video already started. Can you uh, can you start the video from the beginning? Um, could you restart the video? Oops. Now it's it's rolling along. Okay, okay, now let's roll the video. All right, so the basic picture I wanted to show is, okay, here you have a UI, a four-node cluster, and there's no separate services running, right? Now tables are integrated directly into our platform. So one thing that's nice about MapR's uh, current platform is that NFS works very well. And so one aspect of this integration is that you can actually see tables. Here we have a pre-existing table called My Table, and it's accessible through the same namespace as files. So I can directly rename this table from Mac Finder, right? So now I've renamed this table, a more meaningful name. I'm going to use this tool called HBase Shell. It's an interactive wrapper around the HBase client APIs. So I'm going to look at that same table. It's, it's user's table. I'm going to scan it, and I can see I have a bunch of keys and values inside this table. Okay, so I have this table. Now what I want to do is use snapshots in order to do some recovery. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a snapshot of the volume that contains this table, meaning that every table and file inside this volume has one consistent point-in-time snapshot. I've called the snapshot snapshot1, and I'm going to use that for recovery in just a sec. So from the UI, I can actually pull up this table, and I can see some stats about it. So I'm going to pull up the user's table. And you know, I can see that there's just a single region. It's a, it's a tiny table. Um, but what I really want to do is I want to delete the table here, because then I'm going to try to access the table from the snapshots. OK, so the table is now gone. I want to jump back to the HBase shell and still be able to look at that same data. And the way this works is just like with files, there's no recovery step in order to access something from a snapshot. It's just there's a different path. The data is still there under a read-only copy. So the data is still there. I can read it in place. And what I'd like to do is actually copy that data out to a new writable version of that table. And there's actually an HBase utility called copy table, which does a MapReduce job to uh, read data from one source, write it to another location. And that's what I'm going to use here. I can point copy table at the snapshot version of the table. And now I'm going to copy it. I have this table restored. MapReduce job ran, and table is back. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Looks like we're running a little short on time. We had a video with uh, some of our customers talking about the M7. I think we're going to skip that and just wrap up with uh, the last couple topics. If you can advance. And the uh, last item that we announced this week is uh, we partnered with Google. I'd like to invite uh, Scott Van... Uh, Vander Wooten up on stage with me from uh, Google Compute Engine, Scott. And we, uh, we partnered together and this week announced that we set a new uh, Hadoop Terrasort benchmark record. It's one of the things that I think uh, Datacosm needs to continue to push the, the limits on is scale and performance of Hadoop as a platform. So we ran a, a terabyte Terrasort in 54 seconds. Previous record ran on a much larger hardware footprint in over a minute. So it's a, a testament to the 
the performance and scale and power of Google Compute Engine, and uh, also a, a great platform for MapR to, to show our, our performance and scale as well. Yeah, so I just wanted to uh, first thank MapR for having us, having uh, me join you guys on stage, um, and uh, also congratulate you guys on breaking the record uh, using Google Compute Engine. It's uh, you know a testament to the innovation that MapR brings to the to the space and the price uh, or the performance and scalability and uh, value that uh, we've tried to tried hard to build into Compute Engine. So congratulations, you guys. Hey, thanks, Scott. Thanks for all your help with the benchmark as well. And then wrapping up, uh, call to action on this. Uh, but if you have more questions or like to learn more about MapR, please see us at our booth. You can also register for a, a free American Express gift card or uh, also a uh, Amazon Web Services uh, certificate. And if you're interested in taking a look at the M7 product, uh, you can uh, remember an easy URL is uh, www.mapr.com M7 beta. And I thank you for uh, taking some time to hear about MapR and what we're doing. And, and think about the term data cosm and see if you think that applies to what we're doing with big data. Thank you.